NASA's efforts to return astronauts to the moon's surface and build a space station orbiting the moon have just gotten even more expensive. Recently, a report revealed that the estimated cost of NASA's launch tower has gone all the way up to nearly $3 billion. This new figure is even close to the entire cost of developing the Starship program up to this point. So why did these costs go up to such an insane amount, and how did Elon react? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. NASA's Massive Space Launch System, or SLS, a rocket designed to send the Orion spacecraft to the moon, will need an entirely separate launch tower called Mobile Launcher 2, starting with Artemis 4. This is because that mission is designed to kick off the construction of NASA's Lunar Gateway Space Station, an outpost in lunar orbit no earlier than September 2028. The additional launch mass means NASA will need an even more powerful variant of the already enormous SLS and a stronger launch platform. Building this tower is not going to be cheap. NASA estimates it'll cost up to $1.8 billion and won't get done until 2027. According to a new rather harsh report from NASA's OIG, this tower could end up being a lot more expensive than initially expected. The office predicts that the total cost could reach $2.7 billion, a bewildering figure that could significantly undermine NASA's ongoing efforts to establish a more permanent presence on and around the moon. Oh my gosh, no one was surprised by this enormous number? Elon, the head of SpaceX, with his large and small projects, even explained, holy smokes, under a post about a NASA launch tower. Because in reality, Elon personally, for his space company and the entire trend of the current space industry, are moving toward the goal of cutting costs making space exploration no longer considered an expensive luxury. With 2.7 bill in hand, you could do some incredible things for SpaceX's services. Imagine running 43 Falcon 9s, each costing $62 million to send a total of 762 tons of cargo into orbit. More interestingly, this mass is nearly a fifth of the weight of the launch tower itself. With an equal cost, we could even dream of sending the entire tower into space, skipping all those in-between steps. Additionally, it's pretty noteworthy that this amount is only about half the investment SpaceX has made to develop Starship, including building the entire rocket launch infrastructure. According to estimates, this investment ranged from $5 to $6 billion. Meanwhile, the Starship has tested many prototypes and notably four fully stacked launches of the two-state Starship. On the other hand, SLS rocket and Mobile Launcher 1 have only been used once for the lunar approach back in 2022. The launch tower for this vehicle will be used one more time for Artemis 3, but SLS Block 1 will have to be completely rebuilt because NASA's rocket is not reusable. It could be very interesting if we would calculate how many single-use Starship Super Heavy rockets NASA could buy with that $2.7 billion. If Starship truly achieves the goal of reusability as expected, continuing to use the SLS launch system seems pretty wasteful and cost-ineffective. The SLS has cost NASA dearly, both literally and figuratively. The project, a cornerstone of the agency's Artemis program, has suffered from years of delays and budget overruns amounting to billions of dollars. The costs have spiraled so out of control that they've drawn the attention of lawmakers who view the program as unsustainable. Worse yet, the NASA auditor found in its latest report that the ML-2 will not be ready to support a launch until spring of 2029, surpassing the planned 2028 Artemis IV launch date. The OIG admitted NASA officials disagree with their analysis and expect cost growth to the lessen over time, given that the agency's contractor, Bechtel, which is building the tower, has already broken ground at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. However, the auditor argued Bechtel was continuing to underestimate the project's scope, resulting in cost increases in several categories, including labor equipment and administrative expenses. But it's hard to hold Bechtel accountable for this. One of the main points drawn from the new report is that NASA seems pretty limited in what it can do to push Bechtel to build the mobile launch tower faster at a better price. The cost plus contract mechanism gives the space agency limited leverage over the contractor aside from deducting award fees. The report notes NASA declined to exercise the option to convert the contract to a fixed price mechanism. While the option officially remains in the contract, NASA officials informed us that they do not intend to request a fixed price proposal from Bechtel, the report states. Exploration Ground Systems Program and NML2 Project Management told us they presume Bechtel would likely provide a cost proposal far beyond NASA's budget capacity to account for the additional risk that comes with a fixed price contract. In other words, NASA's decision not to use a fixed price contract from the beginning has led to a dilemma. Any proposal from Bechtel could now potentially burn through the agency's yearly budget.
The rising cost of the mobile launch tower once prompted NASA admin Bill Nelson to express his frustration. Back in 22, when the estimated cost for the ML2 structure approached the $1 billion mark, Nelson publicly criticized the cost plus pricing mechanism before the U.S. Congress. I believe that is the plan that can bring us all the value of competition, Nelson said of fixed price contracts. You get it done with that competitive spirit. You get it done cheaper, and that allows us to move away from what's been a plague to us in the past, which is a cost plus contract, and moves to an existing contractual price. However, it seems this nightmare continues to spread despite efforts to make changes. Reports from the OIG like this will always serve as a wake-up call for NASA. In 2022, amid reports that each Artemis launch could cost NASA over $4 billion, the OIG sounded the alarm about the skyrocketing CASA ML2. At that time, auditors discovered that NASA estimated it had spent at least two and a half times more than initially planned on the contractor, and there were also delays of two and a half years. NASA used Mobile Launcher 1 for the first Artemis mission, although it was uncrewed at the end of 2022. According to a 2020 audit, the original tower built for NASA's canceled Constellation program had a development cost of 234 mil. That tower would be used for Artemis missions 1 to 3, including NASA's initial effort to land astronauts on the moon. However, for Artemis 4 and later missions, NASA needs to construct an entirely separate tower to accommodate the even taller Block 1B configuration of the SLS. Once complete, NASA's second mobile launch tower will be 7 foot taller than the first, even though Block 1B is 40 feet taller than the previous one. Even the rocket's been significantly delayed. In a similarly critical report earlier this month, the OIG found a series of issues hindering the development of Boeing's Block 1B rocket. The timing could not be worse, as Boeing is still reeling from NASA's decision to return the troubled Starliner spacecraft without a crew. With costs getting out of control, NASA's going to have to answer some tough questions. Their moon rocket has proven to be extremely unpopular, with Congress wanting NASA to reaffirm its development at an exorbitant price last month. Meanwhile, SpaceX's massive Starship spacecraft is waiting. In fact, NASA hopes using the rocket's human landing system variant for Artemis IV to transport astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface. But everything seems far from smooth. Troubles are once again upon NASA, and this time it's not due to SpaceX's Starship, but rather because of the Lunar Gateway, NASA's proud lunar space station. A new report from the USGAO suggests that there may be a serious obstacle. Spacecraft such as SpaceX's Starship, which is designed to transfer astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon, could be too big to dock with a gateway. The report says that Starship and other large vehicles dock with a gateway. They could affect its ability to stay in the right orbit and point in the right direction. That, in turn, would disrupt communications with the Lunar Gateway and prevent other vehicles from being able to dock. According to the report, the massive Starship is 18 times greater than the value NASA used to develop controllability parameters of the Gateway's power and propulsion element. Program officials are assessing ways to mitigate the risks involved with the docking of large vehicles, including having visiting spacecraft fire their thrusters to share some control with the PPE when docked to the Lunar Gateway. Even if they find a resolution that works for moon missions, the issue poses a greater risk to the Gateway's ability to support future missions up to Mars. Lunar Gateway has been touted as a way for NASA to chart a path for the first human missions to Mars by acting as a staging area for spacecraft on the way to the Red Planet. Its difficulty in hosting large vehicles, however, could throw all that for a loop. Moreover, Gateway is designed for a 15-year life cycle, meaning it could be wrapping up its time in space just when missions to Mars start kicking off. The report also points out that the Lunar Gateway, which has a baseline cost estimate of over $5 billion, is facing scheduling risks. To begin operations for the Gateway, NASA needs to pull off a complicated series of events across seven of its programs, as well as the different contractors that support those programs, according to the GAO report. Gateway needs to be in orbit a year before the launch of Artemis IV, but the report found that its current baseline capability is to launch in 2027, three months behind schedule. The report suggests that NASA's undertaking near the Gateway is overly complex and that it may not be able to fulfill one of its primary goals, which is to support missions to Mars. It's a bad sign for a project that's key to NASA's ambitions over the next decade and beyond. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.